Hey, Pat. We're going to talk about a two-sample confidence interval for proportions. Um, as I look through these solutions, I can surely see many that I'd like to highlight. Um, gosh dang, Eric. Beautiful work again. Uh, but let's look at um, cats. Cats, I thought even though it's not typed up, uh, it definitely is worth a look. Um, so when you do the two-sample proportion intervals, um, you're going to need to do uh, two parameters. And so this is one improvement we can make with cats. Uh, P1 would be the proportion of all cars in Kansas City that are white. And then P2 would be all cars in, um, in Los Angeles that are white. And so you get dinged for that. Uh, however, she does a really nice job with her uh, conditions, um, especially a lot of people uh, forget to do all four conditions. So you can see she's got 87 successes, 37 successes for the other proportion, and the failures are also provided. Um, a way to improve the independence, we do need to make sure that each sample is 10% less than the population of each parameter. But we also need to make sure that the um, sampling, the samples are independent from one another. And that's, that's only on the two sample intervals. Uh, she correctly identifies a two sample Z interval, and she could improve that by saying uh, of proportions. Um, so she does provide your P hats. Um, and one thing I'd also like to see you provide is the actual formula. She does a nice job providing the values inside the formula, um, but let's also provide the formula as well. And, and I think the big part of this is understanding what we just calculated. Um, we are 95% confident that the difference of proportions is from negative 0.14 to 0.04. Since zero is in that interval, uh, it's a plausible difference. And so there is no statistical evidence to show that the true difference of proportions is different in cities, in these two cities. And so getting a result like this is not very satisfying. Uh, statisticians love getting, getting intervals that don't have zero here because if we have an interval that doesn't have zero in it, then that would be statistical evidence that shows that our inference that the two proportions are indeed different. Um, move on to the um, other question about the hours of sleep that um, the students get at Park Hill South. Uh, this is Sarah's. Nice job here. Uh, she clearly defines her parameters with mu1 and mu2. Uh, mu1 is the true mean of the hours of sleep from 2018 Park Hill South students, and mu2 is the true mean of hours of sleep from the from you guys, actually. Um, and she clearly defines that it's the difference of these averages that we're trying to write a confidence interval for. Um, now, the normality here is something we should discuss. Since neither sample is more than 30. Well, both, if both samples were more than 30, then we could use the central limit theorem. But since neither of them are, um, we'd have to make sure that these distributions don't have any outliers or skewness. And so one improvement here that Sarah could make is that she would provide a box and whisker plot for each of the samples. And if you did that, you would see two box and whiskers that um, are symmetric and don't have any outliers. And with that, we can make the assumption that the population distributions are normal enough to use the normal condition. Um, so uh, with the independence, this is the 10% rule, making sure that 28 and 27 are less than the total population of Park Hill South, which is indeed true. Um, and then we're going to look at your sample statistics. Um, and so she does a nice job putting those. And so with the T star versus Z star, since this is a difference of sample of means, we're going to use a T star. Difference of proportion always uses a Z star. But with means, you're going to have to use a T star most of the time. The only time we would use a Z star for the difference of means is when we know the standard deviation of the population. And that's, that's very rare. Um, and so she puts a nice summary here. And it's the same conclusion as the proportion. Since zero falls in the interval, there's no, there's no evidence, there's no evidence to show they are different. 
Um, okay, uh, so um, with that said, I hope you're still listening because I'm going to go ahead and put on a Zoom, an optional Zoom meeting that we can have on Thursday at 10 15. Uh, this will be a place for us to um, talk about and prepare for your first test that's on Friday. So I hope you come by and visit, and we'll give you a chance to see what the test is about on Thursday at 10 15.